everyone, it's Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna give you an overview, review, and demonstration of the Apogee Symphony Desktop. This is a high-end tabletop audio interface with built-in DSP, several preamp EQ and compression models, a touchscreen interface, and it also has optical inputs and outputs to expand your I.O. for multi-track recording or hybrid mixing. And I'm not gonna beat around the bush at all with this review. I'm just gonna say this right out front. I absolutely love this unit. It is hands down the best tabletop interface I have ever used, and it's been living on my desk as my main interface for the past few weeks. The Apogee Symphony desktop has the same ultra clean high end preamps and converters as their flagship Symphony rack units. For additional color, you can use their DSP preamp models, and I absolutely love the way the DSP plugins are implemented in this unit. And I don't necessarily mean the best plugins or the largest selection of plugins, but the way the plugins are implemented requires no software whatsoever. You can dial in all of your plugins right there on the unit. You can have effects print directly into your recording or just use them as monitor effects and record the dry signal. As I've said before, I absolutely hate when I have to use software to control hardware. So this is a huge plus for me. So first let's check out some audio examples and I'll show what preamp model and what effects I was using on the unit as I play the examples and no other post-processing was used on these examples. You're just hearing the sound of the DSP preamps and effects with a level mix. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this ship around and tell me that you can't give one more day. Don't ever tell me why. Don't you ever tell me why. Cause I don't want, I don't want to know. I carried your heart when you needed me. That's just how I uh, Love was meant to be I keep on tearing through your tragedies I took the brunt of your shame And all your misery It's just a goddamn shame That you cannot see All that is good for you Is just as good for me I gave you everything and you left me in the cold. For the last several months, I've been shopping around for a dedicated audio interface for my home studio, and I wanted something with high-end studio-grade preamps and converters with ADA expandability for additional I.O. Along the way, I've tried out and considered some Antelope products, some UA Apollo products, but eventually I settled on Apogee's Symphony line, not only for the Symphony desktop unit, but also their Symphony IO rack unit for expansion. The idea here is that I can use the Symphony desktop as a tabletop control unit, but then have the Symphony IO in the racks to expand the number of inputs and outputs. I actually have a Symphony IO right here that's currently a loner, but I'm gonna be buying this from Apogee after I review it. More on that in a future video. So let's get back to the Symphony desktop and talk about its I.O. options. On the front, the controls are minimal because everything is controlled from the touch display. I'll come back to the touch display in just a bit. 
There's a big knob for volume and preamp control, and you can even hold the knob to put the touchscreen to sleep or to shut down the unit. There is one instrument direct input on the front, as well as a headphone output. And there is a second headphone output on the back as well. There are two mic line level or direct instrument inputs. Next to that are your TRS speaker outputs and an ADAT optical input and output. This is the reason why I've decided to go with this unit. It allows me to add an additional eight channels of input and output so I can use it for multi-track recording and hybrid mixing with hardware. Right now I have my old Focusrite Liquid Sapphire hooked up for up to 10 mic or line inputs. And the optical ports also accept SPDIF optical if you wanna go that route. You have your power connect, a USB-C connection to your computer, and a USB host. Because the DSP preamps and effects are baked right into the unit, the way you can update those plugins is through a firmware update. So that's what this USB host is for. So in the future, when they release more DSP effects, you'll be able to load them onto the unit with a firmware update. So hardware-wise, it's actually pretty simple. The magic is really in the touch display. So there's a lot of controls on this touch display, so I'm not gonna go over all of them, but I'll show you the most important ones. So first up on the main page here, you can just click here to get to the main page. So you can see on input one here, I'm using my microphone for my dialogue. If you click on that, it'll take you to another page where you can see the meter and gain adjustment, and you can adjust the gain of the preamp here. Also, if you click again, it'll take you to another page. Uh, and you can also swipe. You can swipe back and forth. So there's two different options there. So that I don't mess up my dialogue, I'm going to switch over to input two. I'll swipe over and then swipe over again. And there's a bunch of different parameters I can adjust here. So I can adjust the signal level. So you can choose between mic instrument and uh, pro audio and consumer audio line level signals. You can add phantom power. You can stereo link the channels. You can apply a soft limiter to the input channels, and you can also apply a phase flip here. In addition, above that, you can choose different preamp models. There are three different preamp models. You have the SDMP, which is Apogee's own Symphony preamp. You have the AP66, which is a Neve 1066 style preamp. And then the very last one is the AP57. This is an Ampex style tube preamp. So you can click on these little info buttons here and it'll tell you more information about each preamp as well as how to properly gain stage the recording signal with that preamp. So that's pretty nifty. So I'll select the 1066 model. And there's two views for each preamp. There's this view that just shows the controls in just sort of a, a plain way. But if you click here, it'll give you a more stylized control. And if you want to adjust the gain or any of the parameters, you just select the parameter and then use the big knob to adjust that parameter. So it's very simple to dial in the preamp right here from the unit without having to use any software. So I'm gonna click on input two again. And what I wanna take a look at next are these effects racks. So there's a print effects rack as well as a monitor effects rack. The print effects rack are effects that will be printed into your recording. The monitor effects rack will add the effects and you'll hear them in your headphones but these will not affect the recorded signal. So I'm gonna add in some print effects here. And you'll see there's a few uh, different plugins in here. These are built-in DSP plugins that are baked into the unit. If I click on the very top one, this is an Apogee channel strip. I can delete that plugin, add a new one. There's a couple Poltec style EQs. There's an EQ P1A model. There is an MEQ5 model as well. And then if you scroll down, there's an LA3A model, as well as some other Apogee uh, plugins. There's the Mod Comp, which is just a general purpose compressor. And then we have the Mod EQ, which is just a parametric EQ. Now there's not a lot of effects in the unit. Keep in mind, this thing is still pretty new. And when I spoke to Apogee about this, they said they couldn't give me any details, but they do have plans in the works to develop additional effects for the unit that will be free of charge in future firmware updates. Personally, I'd love to see a 1073 preamp model and then maybe an LA-2A and an 1176. Then I'd pretty much uh, be set for most recording tasks 
But for now, the effects they have are very good. Uh, just be really careful about how you set the preamps and read the little notes I showed before about how to properly gain stage the preamps. Okay, so to get back to the main page, you just click here. And the next option is the output. Now this would normally be where you'd control your main monitor output. But if I swipe over a couple times, you'll see that I have my main out format fixed. What this means is that the main outputs are sending a fully open line level signal. I really like this feature because I don't want to control my monitor level from here. I actually already have a monitor control built into my monitor controller. But to turn that off, it's just as simple as switching this over to the variable option. And then to the right of that are the two headphone outputs. You can control the level of each of those here. And then if you click on this very last one, this takes you to the mixer where this shows you all of your inputs and outputs. Now, one of the things that's crazy about this is if you click here, this will take you to a page where you can add effects and customize each of your optical inputs. So like I said, I have my Focusrite Liquid Sapphire plugged into this right now over ADAT, and you can actually add print or monitor effects to your optical inputs. So to me, that's crazy. Like if I wanted to track drums and I wanted to add individual effects to each of my optical inputs, if I click here, this will take me to five through eight, you can do that. So you can apply the DSP effects to any of the optical inputs. The only downside is you obviously can't use the preamp models on the optical inputs, but you can use any of the effects. So that's really cool. So that's an overview of the touch display. Overall, it's a really nice snappy display. I haven't had too many issues controlling the plugins and preamps from the display, but one minor criticism, and this is really my only criticism of this unit, is in the effects modules, this little, this little X icon here to cancel out the plugin. Sometimes as you can see, it's kind of not responsive. And I, I don't know if it's just because I'm not pressing it right. I, it seems like I sort of have to flat finger it to get it to work. But on several occasions, I have trouble with that closing out those plugins. It's sort of just a minor nuisance. Uh, and it's the only situation I've had with the touch display where I have trouble um, with any of the touch parameters. Hopefully that's something that can be fixed in a future firmware update. But again, it's a minor thing. If you don't like using the touch display, you can always use the Apogee Control app. And all of the parameters in this touch display are in that app, including... Uh, making adjustments to all of your plugins and preamps. So that is my review of the Apogee Symphony desktop. I cannot speak highly enough about this unit. This is the one for me. This is the unit I'm going to be using day in and day out in my home studio, and I couldn't be happier. Like I said before, I'm eventually going to be swapping out my Liquid Sapphire for the Symphony I.O. unit, so I'll have much better converters and preamps for multi-track recording and mixing in the near future. The one thing I can think of that some people might be put off by is the price. These go for $14.95 new, but they do have a special discount going for $200 off that ends on May 18th. So if you're interested in getting one of these, make sure to get it before that discount ends. And if you're interested in checking out the Symphony desktop unit, I'll leave some links in the video description and comments below, as well as a link to that $200 rebate. $14.95 might be a little pricey for some home studio enthusiasts, but you get what you pay for. For me personally, I do audio work professionally full time. So I need great sounding high end conversion with a lot of dynamic range for my mixing hardware. And frankly, the cheap audio interfaces I've owned in the past just don't cut it. With this unit, as well as the Symphony IO unit, I'll finally have clean, crystal clear conversion so that I can make the most out of my mixing hardware. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. A huge thanks to Apogee for sending over the Symphony desktop unit for me to review. And thank you to you guys for the constant support. And as always, thanks for watching.